just got to the area that I'm going to be focusing on, hopefully putting in a good chunk of time this season. Um, if you saw any of the scouting videos from this past winter, um, we had them posted up on the OKS Hunter channel. Um, if you want to check them out, this is the same, the same area that I did those scouting videos in. Um, there was a couple nice bucks I had on camera last fall. Um, this is a totally new area. Last year I came in, hung on a couple cameras in the summertime, and ended up getting some nice deer on camera, some good bucks. So I decided to kind of focus in on this area. So in the postseason, um, in my scouting, I spent a lot of time not really in one small area, but kind of this whole stretch, north and south of where I had been getting pictures of some of the bucks. So I invested some time in the winter, scouting, looking around, checking things out, and found some great looking spots. Um, some of them pretty far from where I was looking and originally had hung my cameras. So the plan is today I've got, I brought 10 cameras with me. Uh, I've got spots that I know I want to hang, probably about eight of them. Um, I'm in my first spot right now. I definitely want two cameras here. Um, basically both set up off of beds I found this last winter. Um, one is a bed out kind of in a marsh that comes across um, some low area and then where it starts to transition up. I found a really nice little spot where two big um, of the exit trails kind of come together. There was a couple rubs there. I want one camera there and then there's another really nice bed that's more isolated um, off to the west. And I think I can get a camera in pretty close to that one, not over the bed, but maybe 60 or 70 yards away that I should be able to check um, without really messing anything up. So this is the uh, first area, hang two cameras. Uh, I brought four cameras in my bag just because I haven't spent a ton of time walking this stuff. So if I uh, see something I like, I like to keep an extra camera or two in the bag so I can set up on it and get a camera on what looks good. But uh, yeah, I'm just starting my walk. So I'm kind of scouting my way in. Um, I don't really expect necessarily the bucks to be using these spots right now in summer, but uh, it's July 16th, kind of anticipating these cameras to be soaking until season. A little rub from last year. Um, so the idea is, yeah, it'd be great to get some pictures of bucks this summer, but it's not really the expectation. The expectation is once they start shifting out of their summer velvet patterns, my cameras should be in the spots that are going to catch them. So the best intel is obviously the most recent, the freshest. So I'm hoping, yeah, it'd be great to get some bucks walking through here in the summer, but I'm hoping the first time I come in here to really check these cameras will be with a stand on my back and I can check this camera, see what's happening in the last two or three weeks, you know, beginning of September, first couple weeks of September when our season comes in here in Wisconsin, I can check that camera, see what's on it. And if there's been action, um, I'll be able to set up. Um, I like to set most of my cameras up and that is the plan for today within about 20 or 30 yards of the kill spot. In this case, since I've already pre-scouted, I've got trees picked out in both locations about 20 to 30 yards past where I'm gonna hang my camera. So if I check the camera and there's good sign on it, there's good movement on it, there's a buck using it, I can check that camera right on my phone, go another 20 yards nice and quiet, get into my tree and set up to kill. So that's kind of how I like to set my cameras up. And that's how I'm definitely going to set both of these up. Um, so it's not, these aren't going to be for year round intel. This is going to be for hunting to try to get a kill. So that's the plan. I plan on uh, showing you exactly what my camera setup looks like. So um, once I get over there, I'll show you guys exactly what I'm trying to do with my cameras. So I'm just going through some buckthorn here. I'm on a deer trail now. There's some pin oaks and stuff in here. 
Um, I'm not sure if they actually drop acorns or not, but uh, it's nice that there is a potential food source. Um, but yeah, I'll flip the camera back on once I get to the location I want to hang it. All right, ooh. Definitely some fresh sign in here. Some fresh tracks coming in from the opening. Looks like does. All right, I'll flip this camera on in a minute. All right, so I just got to what I think is gonna be my first camera location. Um, and it's gonna be weird. I am torn. I don't know whether to put a camera here and about 40 yards away um, or just put the camera 40 yards away. Um, I think I'm gonna put two up here. This is the original spot that I thought about hanging it. Um, I'm standing right now in this little creek, this little waterway. Um, it's nice, hard bottom waterway. There are tracks in the sand up and down here in the summertime. It's an awesome place to get photos of any deer, but also bucks. Um, the bucks will walk this waterway. It's cool, get a drink. Um, deer are definitely using, there's a crossing right here, and this is a crossing. Brop. The deer are definitely using this crossing right here. Um, they got a trail that goes in right behind me. This trail had a good rub line on it last year. Um, you can see here, the reeds are broken coming off of this little ground here. Weeds are broken, muddy. They got a trail here. So I think what I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna drop a camera right into this bush right back here and just aim it right down this waterway. Um, I'll get any deer that comes up and down the waterway, any deer crossing on this main crossing here. Um, as this pops out of the creek up onto this little patch of buckthorn, there were some fresh rubs in there last year. So I, uh, I know that bucks were using it. They were bedding straight back this way. There's a really nice little knob with some buck bedding on it, maybe 120 yards away. Um, so I'm gonna kind of monitor this trail and then I think I'm gonna set another camera just back in here a little ways where this main trail that I'm on and another big trail comes from the bedding where they meet. So I know the cameras will be close, but it'll be interesting to see if I'm getting, you know, different deer coming off of that other trail. So it'll be a way for me to kind of monitor not only this crossing, but what are they doing after they cross? Are they following the waterway this way? Are they coming toward the high ground? So I'm gonna stack these two cameras close together. Um, I'm gonna get my first camera, probably right on this little back brush here. I mount it up a little bit higher, pointing down and across, clear out some of this little vegetation, and it'll be basically that view right there. So we've got the crossing right in front, and then there's a trail that kind of follows the waterway here. So should make for some pretty pictures at least. That's the plan. All right, first camera's hung. Got my little cheapy Tasco here. Actually worked out pretty great. This little branch is already kind of tilted downward. So you can see I've got it about a little over head height. Um, I'm standing on the bank of the water too. So I'm up a little bit higher. So the idea is I never want to put my camera in a spot where a deer, especially a buck, can put its nose on it because it's obviously going to smell it. It's going to find it weird. So getting it up here, there's some bushes here. Um, makes it a little bit harder for these deer to come up and put their nose right on it. Um, so it's out of, out of reach. Um, the view should be pretty good. Here's the view. I'm going to press my, my camera. is right up against the lens right now. So there you go. There's the lens, nice little creek shot. So I should be able to get them crossing that creek. Um, should, be a, should be a good setup. So I'm sure I'll get summer pictures, lots of deer here. There's lots of deer coming down these trails using this water. Um, the water itself is filled with tracks. So should be a good spot for some summertime pictures, but then it should give me some intel um, on potentially what bucks are crossing here. And I got a tree picked out 30 yards this way that if it looks good, I can hunt.
Camera number one is up. All right, I'm at camera number two. I'm only about maybe 50 yards from that first one on the creek. Um, the trail from the creek comes across. You can see a little bit of darker trees right here. There's one bigger tree right there. Comes across that little high ground, comes out, wraps along the edge of this buckthorn and tucks into the woods here. But right over here in this little dark hole, there's another trail that crosses that creek and comes in right on the back side of this bush and they kind of meet right here. So this camera right here is aiming down. This is the view right where those two trails meet and then they kind of work along this edge. So it's close to the first one, but I think there's a good possibility I can get some different information on what those deer are coming across on this other trail. And when the deer hit that creek where my first camera is, what are they doing? Are they coming all the way? Are they making it to this point? Because this is where it starts to transition up to some high ground. So it's important to know where they're coming up here. So camera number two. Now I'm gonna jet across um, and hit this other bedding area. And I've got a pretty good idea where I want the camera there. So that'll be the next update. Get a little sweaty out here. Guess you gotta work for it if you wanna get them big bucks, some big shooter bucks. Um, in my third camera location right now, this one totally unplanned. Um, I got working toward the second bedding location that I mentioned, and I saw a really nice rub heading out toward the marsh. So curiosity got the best of me. Followed the trail with the rub on it out into the marsh. Found a little high ground, did not have any trees on it, just a couple little shrubs, but a bunch of doe bedding out there. So I got even more intrigued and started working my way out across the marsh, of course. And I uh, continued going and going and took a look at the map, saw a couple isolated islands, um, followed one point down that looked pretty nice, um, ended up finding a trail camera and somebody's tree steps and a big oak tree. So I kind of veered around there, leaving that spot for um, whoever it is that's got that set up. Cool spot. Hopefully you get some pictures of some good bucks. Um, and I worked past that. And right now I'm on an isolated little... Uh, Kind of like an island, marshy, swampy spot. Um, but there's a little isolated patch here. And as soon as I got onto the southern tip of the patch, there was a nice bed, a couple fresh rubs from last year. So it looked pretty good. Um, I'm not even going to walk it out to the north because I know there's probably going to be another buck bed off to the north side. But there's a really cool little transition where it funnels from this isolated piece to another isolated island. And there's kind of like a thick wall behind me here, a buck brush. And you can see here, nice little opening. And then it wraps around and there's another edge of uh, cattails right there. And there's a couple nice trails coming out right here. So I don't even know if I'll hunt this spot, but I got my camera mounted up high on this uh, popple tree, one stick high here. Um, and it's just overlooking this transition. So my only concern with spots like this is this grass when it heats up so right now the spot my camera's pointed is in the shade but as the sun moves um well actually as the earth moves and the sun starts blaring down on there you can get a lot of false triggers in the blowing grass um, which sucks so i'm hoping that doesn't happen um, actually that reminds me i should probably take my camera off three photo bursts and just put it on single photo here just in case that does happen so it doesn't fill up my cart so I'm going to switch that real quick, but uh, I think this would be a cool place to let a camera soak for a season and see what kind of bucks and deer in general are coming out and using this little isolated island. So not even sure I'll get back here till after the season, but I think it'll be cool to run a little experiment here. So camera number three. All right, camera number four is up. A little dirty fingers. Camera's right here about shoulder level. I rubbed the strap with a bunch of dirt. I rubbed a bunch of mud on the camera just because those straps stink a little. I aired them out for about two weeks outside. The cameras, when I got them, took them out of plastic, wrapped them on a tree. But uh, I stomp them into the dirt just to get a little bit of that plastic smell off them. But um, this is a pretty cool spot. Again, not one that I anticipated. Glad I had an extra camera. 
because I'm way, way, way back. I'm actually closer to another entrance than I am to the one I came in. But uh, I got into some buckbrush and little tiny popple islands and got to a really, really well-traveled spot. So here's what the camera's looking at. There's my licking branch. It's a little oak limb. Picked out a big spot of dirt. So the camera's watching my mock scrape here. Kicked it out real good. Got some licking branches just laid up over the top. But uh, what we're looking at is there's a whole bunch of trails that kind of crisscross right through here. So you can see there's a trail that heads off this way. Big trail that heads off this way. Big trail that heads off this way. And there's some really, you can see where the trail splits. One goes here, huge old signpost rub here. This sucker, this sucker is a big one. She's been rubbed many times. Another old one here, but all kinds of trails. There's a wet edge right there. And there's a little point up here. And it seems like a bunch of deer funnel this way and off that point. You guys can see these trails here. And they all kind of come right through this little pinch. You can see another old rub there. And that's right where the mock scrape is. So here's where I got my scrape. Camera there. Hopefully the camera is just off the trails enough where the deer don't pay it too much attention. And uh, they kind of just do their thing. Um, I'm gonna lay a, a dead branch across in front of this just to try to deter the deer from coming up and putting their nose on it. But uh, yeah, this one should be good. I don't think it's gonna be great in the summer here. I mean, there's a lot of tracks, but they're doe tracks. But man, it seems like the bucks are gonna cruise this. It's like the one little semi-open spot through all this buckthorn. So I'm really excited about this camera. Should do well. Four cameras down, scout my way back to the car, go grab another batch. No camera this time. Just checking out a kill tree. This one's got potential. I just climbed up here, overlooking this beautiful little marshy meadow. This past spring, I was doing some scouting, and right back in there, inside the buckthorn, inside the edge of the buckthorn, about eight yards, really big, well-worn bed up on a little hump, a bunch of big rubs. The trails all kind of lead out right past here. So just wanted to climb up this tree and make sure I had a good view, bend a couple limbs out of the way. So spot looks good.